welcome to the first Ask Mark session. Um, we have four questions, as we will every week, and I'll go through them one at a time. The first question chosen by the mentors is this. I can't understand why thoughts necessarily come from emotion or feeling, and I realize that perhaps my main problem is that I probably don't understand what you mean by the terms themselves. Could you clarify what your definitions of the following terms are? Feeling, emotion, thought, instinct, sensation. Okay, so um, let me say first of all uh, that I am sorry that uh, I'm not being clear, but I do agree that it has to do with the meanings we attach to these words. Sadly, uh, there seems to be a great variety of different ways in which different people use these words. So um, I'm happy to define how I use them, although, of course, in doing so, I must make clear that um, this is just my own idiosyncratic use of them. It doesn't mean that this is the correct way uh, to define these words. I also must confess before I begin that I probably don't always use the words the way that I think that I do. But this is what how I think I define them. Let me start by drawing a conceptual framework. Um, I, I distinguish very broadly between emotion on the one hand and cognition on the other hand. Cognition is the, our mental processing derived from our experience of the external world. So we have perceptions of the external world, which then become registered in memory, and then we work over those memories to perform our cognitive functions. So cognition is a working over representations of previous experiences of the world. That is to say, it's a working with our knowledge of the world using representations of the, of the external world. The emphasis is on external. That's where cognitive representations come from. Emotions, on the other hand, come from within. They, they derive from the subject, not from objects. They derive from us ourselves, not from the outside world. And emotions reflect the state of the subject. They reflect your own state as opposed to the state of the world around you. So cognitions represent the world around you. Emotions represent yourself. Now, emotion is the broad term, just as cognition is the broad term. Now we move to subsets of emotion and subsets of cognition. Let me start uh, 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 with the emotions. Not all emotion is felt. So the feeling, the conscious feeling of an emotion is what I mean by the word feeling. I, 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 I exclude when I use the word feeling, I exclude the expression of the emotions. So emotions include behaviors. You show facial expressions of emotions and you perform certain kinds of behavior like, ah, is a rageful attack. The behavior, the, that rage, is part of emotion. But the feeling of the rage um, is the feeling aspect of the emotion as distinct from the behavioral expression of the emotion. So I hope that that's clear. Feeling is a subset of emotion. Now, uh, instinct is another subset of emotion. What is instinctual are emotions which are built into our brains from the get-go. They are they are hardwired, and there are a good many of them. Fear, for example, is built into the brain. Fear is a hardwired way of responding. It's a sort of pre-prepared way of responding. It comes from the subject. It comes from you, but it's not your own invention. It's something that was there from the beginning. It's an instinctual emotion. And the behavior that goes with fear, for example, is an instinctual emotional behavior. There is a feeling of fear and there's a feeling of rage and then there are certain action patterns that go with them and, and, and those combinations are emotions but they are instinctual emotions. So the defining uh, principle of instinct is that it's hardwired, that it's inherited, uh, that it applies to all of us. There are more complicated emotions like guilt 
and shame, for example, or regret and remorse, which are, which are complicated in the sense that they are things we learn and they are combinations of emotions and cognitions. They're emotions derived from uh, our responses to the world as we've experienced it. So we learn how to feel guilty, what we should feel guilty about. Um, uh, guilt is, is not a, an instinct. It's something that we learn. So instinctual emotions are a subset of emotions as opposed to learnt or social emotions, uh, co which are much more complex things. And the feeling of an emotion is the subjective aspect of it, whether it be instinctual or not. So um, I hope that that's clear, at least as far as the emotion side of things is concerned. Turning to the, co to the cognition side, uh, the word that I was asked to define, the words I was asked to define there are thought and sensation. So I've already said that cognition is the broad basket term for everything represented in the mind derived from external experience. Uh, thought, thinking, is an active form of cognition. It's actually working over your representations in order to do something with it, usually to solve a problem. There are other types of cognition which are not active, like remembering or perceiving. It can be passive. A memory just comes to you. It's a representation, but you're not thinking with it. You're not doing mental work with it. Likewise, a perception just comes to you. Uh, you just passively experience it. It's cognitive. It's represented. It comes from the outside, uh, but it's not actively being thought. Um, that's how I use the word thinking. Um, thinking, I might just mention in passing, for the most part, thinking is a sort of experimental acting. So it's a it's a trying out, doing things in the virtual reality of your representations. It's thinking about doing things as opposed to the actual doing of them. And normally we think as a preparatory step toward action. Once we've thought our way through a problem, then we actually solve the problem in the outside world on the basis of our thought. But obviously often the thinking and the acting uh, are combined with each other. We, we think what, uh, uh, how to solve something while we're busy solving it at the same time. But nevertheless, the, 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 the function uh, uh, of thinking uh, remains, for the most part, a solving of problems relating to the outside world. Sensation, which is the last word I've been asked to define, is the most elementary aspect of perception. So perception is the, uh, everything that's coming in from the outside. Sensation is the elementary sensory uh, um, auditory sensations or visual sensations or olfactory sensations, uh, they are the raw ingredients of perception and they are, uh, when one uses the word sensation, um, they are by definition conscious. You are conscious of your sensations. You can also have stimuli arriving via uh, your, your perceptual uh, organs that you don't actually experience. There is, there is unconscious perception, in which case they don't give rise to actual sensations. So that's how I use the words. I think the, 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 the single most important clarifying concept um, is the distinction between what comes from within and what comes from without. And then uh, uh, in, in, the, the, the definition of, are you talking about a part of what comes from within, a part of emotion, in like, for example, the felt conscious part? Uh, are you talking about a part of what comes from without, like, for example, the thinking the act of doing stuff with what has come from without, with your memory traces, or as opposed to something passive. And then the other important distinction in it is, is it conscious or not? Now, uh, to, to the nub of the matter, which I hope will be the most clarifying of all, um, that cognitions which are conscious uh, cog are cognitions which, which derive from feeling. And this is where the question began. Uh, cognitions which derive from feeling uh, what, it, what it boils down to is that there's a feeling, in other words, there's something about myself, something about the state of me uh, that needs attention. That's what feelings are. They're, they're telling you something about yourself. And then thinking is what you do in order to think your way through. How do I solve the problem? How do I deal with this state of mind, the state of my own, um, this, this, this demand for mental work? And the mental work that I then do is the thinking. That's why I say that thinking is a response to feelings. 
Um, but that is analyzing things down to their constituent parts. Of course, in the lived reality of life, these things are all mishmashed together in a great hurdy burly. And the whole point of analyzing them down to their component parts is so that we can make sense of where the hurdy burly all comes from. I hope that's clarified it. Um, there's every chance I've, in fact, complexified it rather than clarified it. But uh, I have at least tried to clarify it.